Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss a brand new paper called MLP Mixer and all uh, MLP architecture for vision. This paper is coming from Google Brain and uh, the tutorial is going to cover the introduction of the paper. Then we will see this MLP architecture, uh, finally we will see some experiments and results and at the end I am going to show you the code or my implementation uh, of how this uh, architecture is built and how it works and so on. So what is MLP mixer and the name itself says MLP, MLP is nothing but multilayer perceptron or also known as feed forward neural network or the NN dot linear function you use in the PyTorch, right. So the idea of this paper is to use only MLP layers to build a, uh, to build a image classification uh, module. Right? And as you know, in computer vision community, convolutional neural networks are uh, one of the important uh, architectures which are uh, used uh, before these transformers. Uh, of course, uh, see so uh, if you go back to uh, 2013 until 2018 or 19. All of almost all of the computer vision uh, algorithms, uh, whether it could be or computer vision applications, whether it could be image classification or uh, segmentation or video classifications or action classification. So those are all built uh, uh, using convolutional neural networks. And convolutional neural networks are also used in some other applications like uh, ML, uh, like NLP or even in speech. And recently, attention-based mo modules like uh, transformers are uh, are uh, performing better than the convolution uh, modules like ResNet and uh, they, they show that a particular version of this transformer called vision transformer seems to be uh, obtaining the state of the art performance for many computer vision tasks. And that is all uh, uh, that is that is what is happening uh, uh, recently in in computer vision community or any other uh, uh, any other field like M MLP NLP or speech uh, most of the architectures today are uh, built on top of some sort of a transformer but this paper uh, proposes something completely different and completely easy and the idea is very simple so you take mlps or uh, feed forward neural networks and you uh, you build them in some some way uh, with some uh, be, be, i mean uh, uh, put them on top of each other uh, using uh, some trick and uh, that architecture is going to perform comp uh, uh, perform um, as good as uh, any state of the art uh, architecture right uh, that is the idea of this paper so basically what they have done is uh, they have taken the mlp and they have constructed an architecture called an mlp mixer and that gives a, a competitive performance compared to vision transformer which are the state of the art architecture and uh, also uh, it has uh, it is not outperforming vision transformer it is not getting uh, as it's not uh, uh, getting state of the art accuracy but it is uh, uh, it is performing uh, uh, it's giving some comp uh, competitive uh, results and this these architectures are good at some other metric i'm going to show you in the results section uh, explain to you how these models are good in uh, because every model will have their own advantage and disadvantage and we will discuss that and uh, we'll see that um, uh, we'll see the architecture and understand uh, how easy it is um, so this is the architecture so um, so architecture um, so the architecture name is as i said mlp mixer so it looks like this it takes an image uh, it could be any image and this, in this case they have an image of a mixer and uh, this image is split into patches so what do i mean by patches is let's say you have an image of n cross n uh, with C, uh, C could be channel, just ignore it for a minute. And this image is some uh, n cross n dimension. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, into uh, pieces. And these patches uh, will be of a particular dimension, let's say 4 cross 4. So uh, this 4 cross 4 and obviously the channel, these are patches. Then we can uh, join uh, all of these patches and combine them as a, uh, put them in a sequence. And then these patches uh, will be a small uh, 3D tensors. Like for example, this could be a 4 cross 4 cross 3D tensor. Now, uh, what we could do is we can simply project these patches um, into a vector, project these tensors into vector. Uh, but in order to project the tensor, we have to convert the 3D tensor into a single tensor. and let's say you multiply 
all three all the three uh, dimensions you get let's say 48 so the 48 dimension vector uh, of this patch will go as input to a shared linear layer or projection layer you can call and that's going to give you this fixed dimensional vector uh, and this could be 512 for example or it could be 64 depends right now these patches are projected into vectors and now you get the sequence of vectors right so now uh, this is the idea which is kind of uh, borrowed from uh, vision transformer but once you get this sequence of vectors you can do anything like you can apply transformer or anything uh, bidirectional rnn or whatever you like but in this case uh, they are going to apply something called mixer layers and there are there's going to be n of them and the one uh, for one mixer layer looks like this so this is a cross section of one mixer layer and it it has uh, this 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 is the complete block and this block is divided into two parts one is called uh, one is called a uh, token mixer which is this part and another one is called a channel mixer which is this part let's call it a cm let's call this as tm now uh, what is token mixer as you can see um, this architecture or in this token mixer or channel mixer we only have ML mlp nothing else so this mlp is our simple uh, one layer feed forward neural network and you can just construct them using nn dot linear function from pytorch right so that's all very simple right but know that these mlps are shared across all the inputs or sequence of inputs i would say right so now let's uh, go from here so we have this sequence of vectors right and these vectors uh, are going to look like this you can see here these are the vectors you have uh, let's say if you if your image if, if in this case you have nine patches right and nine vectors you will get here right now uh, you also have another dimension which is the channel dimension basically this is the dimension of each vector and those are called as channel and this is 512 in our case and these these number of patches are nine in this case in this example right now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to take this matrix and transpose it so when you transpose it this channel uh, will become the uh, row and this patch will become the column right uh, so what happens is now if, when you transpose it just assume this matrix is transposed and it it looks like this now right now we are going to uh, now if you see this dimension right this dimension is nothing but this dimension right and when you look at this dimension you can just uh, draw a line here and i can see also see this vec this this i can think of it as a vector right and there are lot of values which are shared across uh, or when you look at this vector this this vector contains some uh, features from different patches right that is the way so this vector when you look at when you look at this vector for example right this vector contains features from different uh, patches right uh, that's why it's called token mixer you have these are these are tokens right and you are mixing from different different tokens right all the tokens and these tokens or uh, this vector which has uh, features from different tokens or different patches will go as input to an mlp and mlp is again a feed forward layer and that feed forward layer will project that into uh, another uh, say another uh, uh, dimension uh, sorry another uh, it's going to project into the same dimension so basically if there are if the dimension of this is let's say 9 in our case it's 9 and this is also 9 right so this is like a one to one uh, mapping but you have a, a non linearity in between right and you do the same thing for all the channels right you have uh, each vector here right and this these mlps are shared across all all these vectors right now um, once you get this output this output you can transpose it back and you get you can get get into the same uh, size here like this is a channel and uh, this is a patch dimension so i can say it's 9 and this is 512 is it uh, 
sorry this is 9 this is 512 right now this is all about token uh, mixer right so uh, i hope you guys understood like the token mixer basically what does it takes the uh, takes this matrix just assume this is some sort of a matrix x you transpose it apply to apply it through a linear layer shared linear layer across all the vectors then you transpose the results back into a, into the uh, into uh, the original dimension uh, that is the output of token mixer and i'm going to show you how this is done in the code it's very simple and now we'll come to the channel mixer and channel mixer is also very simple channel mixer you don't do anything you just take the and also uh, not to mention uh, uh, it's very important uh, i think we should mention that i should uh, we should note that there is this skip connection going uh, from here to here looks like some sort of a residual network but you need this skip connection right so from the input directly to the output this this, I, this also i am going to show it to you in the code now uh, you have this linear uh, uh, sorry layer normalization uh, for the output of this and then you give it to uh, the um, mlp2 which is from a uh, channel uh, mixer and this is going to just perform um, or this is going to just operate only on these uh, vectors these channels right and uh, project to another dimension and that is the output of uh, channel mixer this is a simple uh, shared uh, linear layer for channel mixer but for uh, token mixer it is a little bit different because you are doing some sort of transformation or projection right so this is about the mlp i mean and this is just one layer and like that you have uh, this output will go to the next layer and the output will go to third layer and so on and at the end you have this uh, average pooling layer which will just pool all the vector into a single vector and feed it to a fully connected layer to obtain the class probability that is as it is for I mean, this is as simple uh, this is like simple image classification problem right so so that is that is all about this architecture like i, I think it's um, if you it's, it's, I, I feel it's very simple and even in the code wise it's very simple also so i hope, I hope you guys understood uh, now uh, let's look at uh, i mean again the same architecture but has some equations i'm going to explain to you so this x here is a, a matrix of real numbers and it's of dimension s cross c so s being the um, number of patches patch dimension number of patches if there is 100 patch it's 100 and number of channels is again uh, could be uh, 512 uh, depending on the first projection layers uh, output right now uh, equation wise it looks like this very simple uh, for all the channels for the token mixer um, for this for the token mixing token mixer so for all the channels or uh, all the channel from 1 to C uh, you first do the layer normalization and then you do the matrix multiplication right uh, and then you take uh, uh, non-linearity in our case we use uh, JLU linearity could be a ReLU also and uh, you have uh, another matrix uh, which uh, uh, which which uh, uh, other matrix projection and then you have uh, an addition uh, which is skip connection and similarly the um, the token mixer also sorry channel mixer also right now uh, let's look at the um, uh, this is just the specifications uh, they have different architectures in the result section uh, like they are mentioned as BLH and base large and huge models uh, depending on some other paper and uh, these are depending on the patch size like what is what should be the hidden size sequence length and all those these are some calculations you can do or some some hyper parameters uh, i'm going to show you one uh, only one table uh, then we can just jump on to the the code section uh, they have a lot of other uh, tables uh, really nice uh, really neat results i think if, if you check out the paper you will see a lot of uh, great results experimentations and so on but I'm just going to show you one table which is uh, important uh, like uh, you have the um, ImageNet and uh, other uh, data sets and uh, they are mentioning like what is the throughput and core days TPUs right and uh, most importantly results wise I mean accuracy wise as you can see here uh, uh, BIT and VIT are uh, better than the mixer model a uh, little bit better uh, 
more i think about more than one percent and uh, and similarly here also uh, if you do uh, this is one pre-trained on ImageNet and this is pre-trained on gft data and uh, so uh, so this way uh, if you, if you see results comp accuracy wise it is not kind of beating the state of the art accuracies uh, but if you look at the throughput uh, for the inference like you, as you know um, inference is also one of the important problem in in when you when you deploy any uh, model computation model or any other model your throughput is very important like how many images can you process in a second on a gpu right so that one if you look at it uh, forget about this this first one if you look at these three since these are the state of the art ones if you look at them the mixer is way better than the vit and bit right right so this is one of the one important um, results i am guessing i i guess uh, this is also very important also uh, because uh, interesting and important because many places where you want uh, reasonable amount of accuracy and you want very good throughput i think you should uh, you should go for this mixer model because you may lose just 1% of the accuracy but uh, if your throughput is really great uh, and if there is no harm in losing 1% accuracy in in deployment i think uh, this is like the best uh, uh, model right and uh, i mean i'm i'm not uh, comparing with hello net i'm just uh, talking about this these three but uh, yeah so compared to compared to vit um, uh, uh, this uh, this throughput is really good uh, uh, but uh, losing 1% of accuracy so uh, yeah so uh, this is all about the paper and uh, theory part and result sections and so on now we'll look at the uh, the actual uh, uh, the uh, uh, model, so the uh, the code basically. So you have two block. You have a first time. I'm, I'm going to. I have two uh, classes here. Uh, one class is uh, like this. You have one mixer block. So the mixer block here is uh, you will have some uh, pre uh, pre norm and uh, post norm, and then you have token mixer. Uh, which will have some linear layer and jelu and uh, dropout um, and channel mixer is again uh, a linear layer jelu and dropout right and uh, like you can see here i'm doing the transpose um, and i'm adding this is for the for the um, skip connection residual connection uh, then you do post norm and you run through a uh, channel mixer and uh, Coming to the uh, the main class, the MLP mixer. Uh, these are like the inputs, like input size, patch size, and so on. You can provide. And uh, first projection, you do patch to embedding. Uh, so that is, uh, you can use this rearrange function to convert uh, the 3D matrix into a single vector, and then do the linear layer. And uh, the network, you can have. Let's say if you want 12 layers, you can have 12 layers here and average pooling um, in the case uh, they are using uh, i'm guessing they use uh, yeah average pooling but uh, here i'm using global average pooling i think they are using this adaptive average pooling layer here and then finally you have the classification layer so uh, yeah and you can uh, just call the class like this pass the input and patch dimensions and then you get the model uh, and uh, that's all so <laughs> you get the model and then you can use it for training your uh, favorite uh, classifier for example right so that is all about this uh, uh, tutorial uh, i'm going to put the i have the code already on github and i'm going to put the link uh, for that code uh, in this uh, in the in the description box and you can take the code and see uh, uh, and you can do modifications and test it yourself and there are other implementations uh, people have also uh, written uh, same PyTorch implementations um, so yeah that's all about this tutorial thank you so much for watching uh, if you like it uh, please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more of these kind of video contents thank you